Welcome to a Grace Digital presentation. In this video, we discuss Greed Robs Us. There is an invisible green eyed monster called Greed that loves to lurk at the back of our mind, silently cries out more, reach for more, get more, take more, steal more, till it silently leads us down a dark and slippery road where we sadly lose all that is precious to us. It isn't that wanting more is wrong, but we must always recognize the motive for wanting more. Take note of who is offering more and the lengths we are willing to go just to own more. I know the plans I have for you, announces the Lord. I want you to enjoy success. I do not plan to harm you. I will give you hope for years to come. Jeremiah 29 11 NIRV Yes, God loves to lavish us with his goodness, but he will always be against covetousness and greed because they are little thorns that start up looking harmless in a garden, but eventually they overwhelm the whole garden till they choke out the life and beauty that existed previously. The sower soweth the word, and these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things entering it, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. Mark 4, 14, 18, and 19 KJV God's goodness is enduring and it stems from who he is till it flows into what he does. Oh, how great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have prepared for those who trust in you in the presence of the sons of men. You shall hide in them in the secret place of your presence from the plots of man. You shall keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues, Psalm 31, 19 through 20, NKJV. However, as his children, he expects us to seek his face for direction, worth, or identity, rather than rely on getting more things so as to fill the emptiness or void we notice in our souls. It is as we do this that he shows us his plans. Then as we obey, taking one step after the other, our destiny starts to unfold. Little by little, he trains and equips us to be able to function in every level that we find ourselves. With greed, we start to jump levels without any regard for process, people, plans, knowledge, or timing. As a loving father, God wants us to be strong enough to handle the things we will meet along the way. I will not drive them out from before you in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beasts of the field become too numerous for you. Little by little I will drive them out before you, until you have increased and you inherit the land. Exodus 23, 29, and 30 NKJV What use is it to go fast, grabbing all along the way and hurting others in the process, only to get destroyed by our greed on the same path? However, not all men subscribe to this. So many people are in a hurry to go far in the shortest time possible. They even ignore all boundaries set up by God to guard their lives and souls from the traps and snares of the enemy. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. 1 Timothy 6, 6-11 KJV Greed throws away the merits of discipline and only seeks a life of getting all by all means. They forget it is better to be slow but sure in our race through life than to be fast yet fail so miserably. Greed makes people long for what others have, even when they already have surplus of the same thing. To them, it doesn't matter if this act of gluttony ends up as a waste or if others are hurt in the process of getting it, but soon they are ensnared by their covetousness till it forms a stronghold in their hearts. He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house, but he that hateth gifts shall live. Proverbs 15, 27 KJV Greed eventually becomes a cankerworm that destroys the victim that hosts it. It makes whatever a person has to appear so small in their eyes. 
there is always a crave for more, and when that more is grabbed, it is time for more again. Nothing satisfies the greedy soul until it is lured away to destruction. Our first example from the Bible is Achan. He was part of the dynamic army that executed so many exploits under Joshua's leadership as they marched victoriously into the Promised Land. In one of their battles against the nation of Ea, their strategy session had shown that this was a small nation, that they wouldn't need for them to use so much resources to conquer. But a surprise awaited them, because there was a compromise in their camp. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ea, which is beside beth -Avon, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ea, and they returned to Joshua, and said unto him, let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ea. And make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but a few. So there went up thither of the people about three thousand men, and they fled before the men of Ea. And the men of Ea smote them about thirty and six men, for they chased them from before the gate even into Shebarim, and smote them in the going down. Wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face, before the ark until the eventide, he and the elders of Israel, and put dust upon their heads. Joshua 7, 1 through 6, KJV. This was not good news, as a defeat would expose the young nation on their way to attack other nations. So Joshua needed to find out what caused the breach in their camp. Why was God's mighty protection withdrawn? And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan, to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites, to destroy us? Would to God we have been content and dwelt on the other side Jordan. O Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? Israel hath sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen and disassembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you any more, except ye destroy the accursed from among you. Joshua 7, 7 and 8, 10 through 12, KJV. God graciously revealed the source of the defeat promptly. Greed puts a wedge between us, and God allows the enemy to wreak havoc with ease. This is exactly what happened to Achan. A promising military career was wrecked, and sadly his whole family paid the price for his greed. Up, sanctify the people, and say, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, There is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou canst not stand before thine enemies, until ye take away the accursed thing from among you. And it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire, he and all that he hath. Because he hath transgressed the covenant of the Lord, because he hath wrought folly in Israel. So Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes and the tribe of Judah was taken, and he brought his household man by man. And Achan the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, was taken. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment, and two hundred shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold of fifty shekels weight, then I coveted them, and took them. And behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent, in the silver under it. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan the son of Zerah, and the silver, and the garment, and the wedge of gold, and his sons, 
and his daughters, and his oxen, and his asses, and his sheep, and his tent, and all that he had, and brought them unto the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones, and burned them with fire, after they had stoned them with stones. Joshua chapter 7 KJV What a sad end! Greed made him think he was gaining more till it robbed and destroyed him utterly. Achan ruined his life and his family because of greed. Our second example is a man who would probably have carried the anointing of Elisha. Gehazi was the servant of Elijah. His problem came when instead of desiring the anointing, he desired the physical rewards. A rich man struck with a disease of leprosy had just been healed by God through the prophet Elijah. The man, Naaman, a Syrian army captain was so excited that he made an enormous offering to the man of God. But the prophet refused the offering, as the healed man set off to his country, most probably with so much awe at not only being healed, but also that the healing came at no cost. He was pursued by Gehazi, and made to part with his goods under the guise that it was the prophet who wanted them. Then he went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. And he returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and came, and stood before him. And he said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth, but in Israel. Now therefore I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. But he said, As the Lord liveth, before whom I stand, I will receive none. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. And he said unto him, Go in peace. So he departed from him a little way. But Gehazi, the servant of Elijah, the man of God, said, Behold, my master hath spared Naaman the Syrian, and not receiving at his hands that which he brought. But as the Lord liveth, I will run after him, and take somewhat of him. So Gehazi followed after Naaman. And when Naaman saw him running after him, he lighted down from the chariot to meet him. And he said, Is all well? He said, All is well. My master hath sent me, saying, Behold, even now there be come to me from Mount Ephraim, two young men of the sons of the prophets. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver and two changes of garments. And when he came to the tower, he took them from their hand and bestowed them in the house. And he let the men go, and they departed. But he went in and stood before his master. And Elisha said unto him, Whence comest thou, Gehazi? And he said, Thy servant went no whither. And he said unto him, Went not mine heart with thee? When the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee, is it a time to receive money, and to receive garments, and olive yards, and vineyards, and sheep, and oxen, and men servants, and maid servants? The leprosy, therefore, of Naaman shall cleave unto thee, and unto thy seed forever. And he went out from his presence a leper as white as snow. 2 Kings chapter 5 KJV Our final example is probably the saddest story. Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve disciples, had so much going for him, both in time and eternity. So Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, that in the regeneration when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Matthew 19, 28, NKJV But he made his choice by listening to the voice of greed. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for three hundred denarii and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief, and had the money box, and he used to take what was put in it. John 12, 4-6 NKJV He lost his place in history on earth and lost eternity because of a moral failure called greed and covetousness. And in those days Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples, together the number of names was about a hundred and twenty, and said, Men and brethren, this scripture had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit spoke before by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus, for he was numbered with us and obtained a part in this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the wages of iniquity, 
and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle and all his entrails gushed out. And it became known to all those dwelling in Jerusalem. So that field is called in their own language, Akil Dema, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his dwelling place be desolate, and let no one live in it, and let another take his office. Therefore, of those men who have accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning with the baptism of John to that day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. And they prayed and said, You, O Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which of these two you have chosen to take part in this ministry, an apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, and he might go to his own place. Acts chapter 1 NKJV His place was taken by another, and eternity with Christ was foolishly traded for the lure of greed and its temporal glitter. It is critical, therefore, to guard our hearts from greed. It has the ability to derail a destiny irretrievably. We must learn to abound in a base as the Apostle Paul said. The scriptures give us a blueprint by which to escape greed. Yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. After all, we brought nothing with us when we came into the world, and we can't take anything with us when we leave. So if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. 1 Timothy 6, 6-8 NLT Let us pray. Father, thank you because you have given me all things that has to do with life and godliness. Thank you because you never withhold any good thing from me. Grant me the grace to not yield to the trap of greed, but trust in your rich provision step by step. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.